Most of us accept bruises, stubbed toes, and paper cuts as normal parts of our life, or a brief interruption to our day. But some have been unlucky enough to endure unexpected and unusual injuries that change the course of their lives. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three strange injuries. Phineas Gage Phineas Gage was a regular, hard-working member of the railroad crew until he suffered a shocking, accidental injury in 1848 that permanently altered his life and identity. Gage and his co-workers were preparing the space for a new set of railroad tracks when an accidental explosion occurred as Gage brushed a rock containing blasting powder with his iron tamping tool. This led to the rod sparking up like a rocket, striking Gage and entering his head under the left cheekbone. The rod pierced through his skull and brain, ultimately coming out through the top of his head, severely damaging his frontal lobe, the part of the brain just behind the forehead. This rod was about three and a half feet long, and it weighed approximately 13 pounds. His injury appeared grave and likely deadly to his co-workers, but they noticed that he was still able to walk and talk. After his crew rushed him to medical help, he was greeted by Dr. Edward H. Williams, who conversed with him while loose chunks of his brain were removed. Though his condition appeared completely stable at first, a few days later, Gage developed an infection that put him in a semi-coma for 10 days. At this point, his recovery was put in the hands of a different doctor, J. M. Harlow. After regaining consciousness, it only took Gage four days to regain his ability to walk, and about a week later, all of his cognitive functions started working like normal. However, Dr. Harlow noticed one thing was still out of shape. His personality. Before the accident, Gage's crew described him as hard-working and responsible, but now he was unsettled, profane, and disrespectful. A completely new person, it seemed. He was transferred to his parents' home to recover, where his personality evolved even further away from the person he was known to be. Now Gage had no reservation on his words and actions, and he grew even more demanding. Due to his new uncivil personality, Gage struggled to find work. But the story of his incident had spread so widely and brought him so much fame that he was able to sell himself as a tourist attraction, travelling the country with an iron rod. By some reports, Gage's personality phased back to normal after spending some time at his parents' house, which allowed him to take more typical employment, such as a stagecoach job. Despite Gage's apparent return, his physical health eventually started to decline. Almost a whole decade after his accident, he started suffering from epileptic seizures, the severity of which ultimately led to his death at the age of 36. Terrible as this accident was, it led to an important discovery in the scientific community. Because his personality changed as a result of an injury to the brain's frontal lobe, scientists now had an idea of what the frontal lobe was used for, social behaviour. Today, his name is still well known among scientists, and his skull and iron rod can still be seen displayed at Harvard Warren's Anatomical Museum. Anatoly Bogorsky Anatoly Bogorsky is a Russian scientist who created an unusual case study of himself in 1978. This was when he stuck his head in a particle accelerator, a machine designed for research that can quickly create a beam of electrically charged particles. This accident expanded our knowledge of physics, because this sort of radiation injury was practically unheard of before this. Previously, scientists would have only been able to offer best guesses of what would happen to someone if any part of them entered a particle accelerator. Their guesses certainly were fairly grim, based on the fact that proton radiation can break the chemical bonds of DNA, which can kill cells or lead to cancers. Bogorsky came in contact with this particle accelerator because of his job at the Institute for High Energy Physics in Russia. He noticed it was having a problem, so to see what was going wrong, he put his head inside. He didn't know the accelerator was running, because the hazard lights had been switched off for a different experiment. His head intersected with an invisible proton beam that invaded through the back of his head and left through his nose. Bogorsky reported the incident as painless, but noted seeing a flash brighter than a thousand suns. It's thought that during this accident, he absorbed more radiation than any other human has ever experienced, up to 300 times the amount that can normally kill someone. Scientists believe he survived because he was struck by a focused beam, which meant he took all the damage to one small area instead of his entire body. 
His symptoms started with swelling on the left side of his face, but doctors noticed a hole burned through his brain that destroyed tissue, leading to the paralysis of half his face. He also lost hearing in his left ear and developed epilepsy. Luckily, all his intellectual functions remain intact and he lives to this day. As disturbing and distressing as the incident was, Bogorsky's experience contributed to human knowledge by answering the question of what happens to humans exposed to intense and focused radiation. It's certainly a rare phenomenon, as most people don't have access to a particle accelerator, let alone one with conveniently broken hazard signs. As a scientist himself, Bogorsky might at least be able to take some solace in his accident's scientific value. Vesna Volovic For 27 people, the 1972 explosion of the Yugoslav Airlines DC-9 aeroplane flying above Czechoslovakia meant instant death. But for one person, Vesna Volovic, it meant severe injuries sustained for a 16-month-long recovery period and a forever changed life full of guilt and fame. After the DC-9 exploded, it plunged 33,000 feet and ultimately crashed into a snowy mountain where all passengers and crew, except for Volovic, were sucked out of the plane into sub-freezing temperatures to their deaths. Volovic was one of the flight attendants on board the aircraft, and at the time of the crash was in the plane's tail with the food carts. It's believed that one of the food carts aided her in her survival, as it wedged her in place while all the others were forcefully ejected from the plane in the blast. On the way down, trees helped to break the fall of the plane's tail, and once it hit the hill, it was cushioned by deep snow, all contributing to her survival. The survival after a 33,000 foot drop is recognised by the Guinness World Record as the longest non-fatal fall without a parachute. The cause of the incident isn't entirely known. Czech authorities determined that explosives in a suitcase were set off, tearing the plane apart and leading to its plummet. But independent investigators drew the conclusion that the aircraft was accidentally shot down by the Czechoslovak Air Force at only 2,625 feet. Though Valovic survived, she was found far from peak condition. When she was found by villager Bruno Honk, who followed the sound of her screams, she was already suffering from a skull fracture, broken legs, three broken vertebrae and paralysis from the waist down. She entered into a coma, and when she woke up she had no memory of the flight. However, in less than a year, she had recovered enough to regain her ability to walk, albeit with a limp. Later that year, she returned to work for the airline, now in an office job. Though she wished to return to her old job as a flight attendant, as she still had no memory of the flight and therefore no fear of planes, the airline refused her, knowing the celebrity status she gained from the crash would bring too much publicity to the accident. After all, everyone in Yugoslavia knew of her and what she'd been through. She had received a decoration from the president of Yugoslavia, and Serbian folk singer recorded his song, Vesna the Stewardess, in her honour. While her sudden fame and new identity as a local hero hindered her ability to continue the career she had chosen for herself, she was able to use this attention to work successfully as a pro-democracy activist. This led to her firing from the airline for anti-government speech. While a normal citizen of Yugoslavia would be arrested for these transgressions, her hero status prevented this her arrest just didn't seem worth the immense public backlash that would have followed. While she may seem extremely lucky to have beaten the odds, supporting the record for the highest who survived, it may have been bad luck that put her on that flight in the first place. She wasn't even scheduled to attend the flight, a different flight attendant should have been on board. She reminded others that while she may have escaped long-term physical harm in the flight, she didn't escape mental harm. Losing her job was just the beginning. Her recovery strained her family and their finances. Both her parents died prematurely within years of the accident, and she believed the distress from her accident played a part in this. She also endured the trauma of survival guilt and turned to orthodox Christianity to cope with it. Still, before she died in 2016 at the age of 66, she passed down an inspiring message. Though the crash negatively impacted her life in multiple ways, she stated that it also inspired optimism in her. She knew now that if she could survive what she did, people could get through anything. Remember these stories, and remind yourself that the human body can prevail over much worse. So what do you make of these crazy accidents and how they all survived? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and help us by growing this community 
whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.